information as we can while dealing with the limitations that we are experiencing here, Mark. And you've been here a long time. I'm guessing you've never seen it. Last walk for the break. So it's, it's Sunday. I did want to try and get them out yesterday, but we've had such strong winds here the last couple of nights and days, and it was just strong wind all day. Rain, sun, rain, sun, rain, sun, rain, sun, throughout the whole day. Just now on this walk, one of my neighbours who's in the community fire unit with me was out the front with her daughter and their dog and they asked if these boys would be okay meeting their boy. I said, we'll give it a try, minor on lead. And she said, oh, ours is clueless. He's just really happy. And um, they were good. A little bit apprehensive at first, the flighty, but they did really well with them. No barking, no growling. Um, oh, except for one part where that man didn't like where he was getting sniffed. And they were all good. And then another neighbour, who we know, who's got greyhounds, was walking down the street. And as soon as these boys saw the greyhound, they just wanted to bark. So they've got a thing about big dogs. That's the thing. Especially Batman. I mean, it's little dog syndrome. But I was talking to talking to her about the weather yesterday and she said we actually got a really light snow flurry because it was quite cold that's another reason I didn't get out but today it's just beautiful blue sky windy still next door neighbor had part of a tree fall down and he's been chopping it up like a big branch dropping off it Once I get back to the house from this walk, it'll be a case of chores. I think I've got to cook up more food for these guys. So I went up to the store this morning to buy some more veggies. Just chores and tidy up and get ready for tomorrow. So that I don't feel like I'm leaving tomorrow for work and I don't know. Just need to feel ready. Just had a short pit stop then while the boys were sniffing it and I wasn't sure what in the front yard. Like the street front yard of a house back there. And then I noticed bandicoot holes. And we're, we're a decent hike from the house now. And it reminded me that I started looking up bandicoots the other day because my wife wanted to know more and um, like what do they eat and etc and apparently the um, female bandicoots will have a, a range that they will of area that they'll wander around in um, between one to four hectares quite territorial and the females only associate with the males around breeding time they will breed about four or five times a year because their gestation period is only 11 days. And they give birth to a baby, that, like up to five babies, kind of like little kangaroos, tiny little squirts of a thing. And they'll sit in their pouch as they develop attached to a teat. And bandicoots pouches face backwards so they don't fill up with dirt while they're digging. But the males range will cover an area between 14 and 18 hectares. I'll convert these to acres, don't worry. <laughs> That's a massive area. Like a, a hectare is 10,000 square metres. That's a massive range. So when we see all these little bandicoot holes everywhere, who knows how many are out here and they travel on a long way. Made it to the lookout and decided to actually come right down to the rock again today because the weather's so nice and the 
breeze has really died down, so it feels nice here. Nice place to sit. Do it. Yeah. Monday morning and back to work. And of course, beautiful sunny day, and I'll probably stay that way all day. Today is another staff development today, so no students today. But we've got certain programs that we've got to have run. There's one that's a state mandated one, some faculty planning time. I think as a school, as an executive especially, starting to realise how much time needs to be given to staff rather than having other meetings for meeting's sake. And that's one thing that I really appreciate about current boss. I won't say new boss, he's been here for two years now, I think. Yeah, two and a bit. Time flies. Anyway, I have seen the schedule for the day. I don't remember much of it, but I know that we've got a specific session. I think it's the morning session. In breaking news, it won't be breaking news by the time you see this, but woke up this morning and turned on YouTube as I was eating my breakfast and there was breaking news that Biden has dropped out of the US presidential election. Not quitting, he's seeing out his term, but he's not going to be running for re-election. There's been no announcement made about who it will be. Some people on the channels I watched said that like Kamala Harris being the VP is possibly the natural choice and then she picks a new VP but 
that wasn't said in Biden's statement. Mind you, Biden's statement was just a letter via Twitter. And that's most likely because, I mean, he's sick with COVID and isolating at the moment. So when he has a full press briefing, he'll probably make more information known then. I know that the DNC conference has, is a few weeks away, so there you go. Um, one interesting tidbit I heard, <laughs> of course some people were saying Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris, or that sort of stuff. And apparently, according to the Constitution, the VP and President can't be from the same state. They need to be from different states. Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom are both from California. People, other people were mentioning some other names, and again, they were from California. Well, sorry, just saw a massive rear-ended car, and that was from the other day. So it's just been taped off and left on the side of the road. So I remember driving past it that way. So that was something I did not know. Um, some people are floating Bernie Sanders as VP, whether they'll also do a, I don't know, uh, another presidential runoff within the DNC. Who knows? All I know is that um, whoever it is, Democrats and progressives and hopefully independents will get behind them because if Trump does get in, they're going to try and push through the um, mandate for leadership or otherwise known as Project 2025. They'll end up packing more of the courts with conservative or right-wing judges. I saw, it was a Matt Gates tweeted out that Eileen Cannon was slated as being a pick for the Supreme Court if Judge Justice Thomas decides to retire in the next four years, which I'm pretty sure he's planning on doing as a way to help pack the Supreme Court for decades to come. Can you imagine that? Somebody who's barely presided over any cases. I think she's only had less than a handful of cases before she got given the Trump case, the documents case, and she's just dragged that out, pandering to Trump, and as soon as there was that hint from Thomas that, oh, perhaps the special counsel wasn't legitimate, she just jumped on that and just dismissed the case, which everybody who's had something against them using a special counsel, including Hunter Biden is now going to appeal. I've gone on a bit too much. Needless to say, I hope they find a good team. I'm not sure who the candidate will be for president, but I do hope that they find a good team that people can get behind. Because seriously, there's already been a number of rights stripped away from people, in particular women over there and there's already states republican states that have been um, purging the voter registration lists so close to the election so that if you turn up and you don't realize you were on that list you're not registered to vote you can't vote so people have to try and check and ohio was the main state i heard about that purged 160,000 voters saying they hadn't been active in four years so they voted in the last presidential election and didn't bother with any of the small ones or the by-elections or anything like that now that's that's dirty that's absolutely dirty here you get registered you're registered the only thing that changes is if you move you have to make sure that you update your address details so that you're in the right um, ward, as they're called here. A ward for our local elections, anyway. It didn't mean to say that much. Bit of a ramble. I will say this. 
my wife says why do I care so much about the US elections I've had other people say it as well well number one my wife is a US citizen and we do want to go and move there why would I want to go and move there if it turns to crap there it's almost like um, the movie The Purge is being moved towards. <laughs> Considering the reach and level of power that the US has worldwide, a pretty important election. All of their elections are pretty important elections because they do have their finger in so many different countries I mean look at how many just look at how many um, military bases there are US mili military installations or bases across the planet all around the globe enough of that to finish listening to the new episode of making it have a great day and like i said this will all come out well after you've heard it because it was today sunday us monday australia um maybe i'll make sure that i get this one out sooner rather than later whatever have a good one